AI The Somnium Files is a 2019 release from Spike Chunsoft. It joined Xbox Game Pass back in September of 2021, and I was recently offered the chance to review the next game in the series Nirvana Initiative. So I figured I'd take a look at the original first to get my bearings. I came in with no clue what the game was about and no expectations. I was completely blown away by one of the best mystery stories I have ever played through. Visual novels are definitely not my genre, but after just how much I enjoyed this one, maybe it should be. Let's go over why I think this game is worth checking out in the Xbox era review of AI The Somnium Files. Like always, I'll try to use as few specifics as possible so as to not spoil anything. The game is mostly a follow-the-plot, lightly interactive novel. You are Kaname Dante, a detective for a special police unit. You are a sinker, which I'll explain in a little bit. Kaname is a handsome, brooding, pornomag-obsessed loner who has a 13-year-old girl as a roommate and an AI living in his left eye socket named Aiba, which is short for AI Ball. The game is typically weird, full-on anime, and somehow it avoided many of the major pitfalls I end up having with anime and its treatment of women. That's because this game's writing is not only legitimately hilarious most of the time, it's incredibly smart. So much of the major, goofy, horny elements feel like a direct send-up of the typical anime tropes. That writing, though. The English translation is phenomenal. The music is damn near perfect at matching each scene, and the English dub to support it is one of the best I can remember. Every character excels with deep issues and massive growth. A lot of this comes through the game's use of branching timelines. You will encounter wildly different versions of your character as you can go back and change your choices to branch things off in set ways at specific parts of the story. The story starts off and ends on a set path at its conclusion, but getting there is an incredible mystery with an epic and satisfying conclusion. I'm getting a bit ahead of myself, though. The game starts with the murder of a local woman, someone Date knows. Her left eye is missing, and things quickly become more and more complicated from there. The majority of the title is a fixed position, 3D rendered point and click adventure. During your sync sessions, where you enter into a subject's mind to find out their secrets, the game does go into a very basic third-person behind-the-camera mode. You are moving around freely, though with the at times incredibly strict timer in choosing actions to do. A few rather easy mini-games are tied to aiming and moving pop up as well, but the majority of this game is about being told a story as you find the correct things to click on. AI The Somnium Files is all about the tone and the story. It is a masterwork of mixing the serious and the absurd. Multiple times throughout the game, Date's love of porno mags is used to give him near superhuman powers. As Iba notes, his reflexes increase 3.6 times when he sees one, after all. This is the type of over-the-top, dumb humor that normally pushes me away from an anime story. Something about the earnest delivery of the voice acting, the excellent comedic timing of when it is or isn't used, and just how hard the more serious moments hit. I can't really put it into words, but outside of some crass words regarding women's breasts, I found myself with a smile on my face for the majority of the game. The times I didn't, though, was when the shocking gore came up. Either in the current times or in flashbacks, this game goes to some incredibly dark places. Halfway through my 15 or so hour playthrough, I wasn't sure the game would earn the right for the shocking displays of truly awful violence, but it did. As the loose threads began to tie up, I saw just how core a pillar to the entire plot that violence was. It was not there for simple shock value. It is the driver behind the game's themes, and without it, the emotional beats would not have hit nearly as hard for me. As stated before, the game uses a multiple timeline mechanic that generally branches off in a few possible ways at certain sync sessions. You can access the menu at any time and jump to any point of a story beat. And to see the true ending of the game, you will have to go through all of the possible outcomes. You will see the credits roll four or five hours in, depending on how well you can deal with the only truly bad part of the game, its puzzles. Those 3D sync sessions start out fine. You're looking to clear mental locks inside your subject's head, and you have six in-game minutes to do so. 
Thankfully, time only moves either when you move or you make a decision. Objects will have names in the environment, and through essentially trial and error, you'll either luckily guess or slowly stumble your way to the correct answers. You'll get a checkpoint at each cleared mental lock from which you can restart with the amount of time you had left. As the game has now been out for nearly three years, do not do what I did. Find guides and use them to get through these puzzles at the first sign of frustration. Some of them are insanely tight timing-wise. Each action can possibly give you items to use which will lower the amount of time used by an action by say one third or a sixth, and eventually the timing becomes so ridiculously tight that a single mistake means that you have to completely restart. A few times I got to the last area, but I had made a mistake or two in a previous mental lock and I had to fully restart the entire thing. One endgame sync session took me over an hour, whereas if I had known the answers from a guide, it would have been roughly five minutes. Trial and error simply is not fun, though occasionally some of the puzzles did make a tiny bit of logical sense. If you aren't struggling with them, it can be a fun mechanic, but the moment you start to feel agitated like I did, be smarter than me and just find a guide. The story is too good to give up on because of the poor puzzles and the fact that the nearly every achievement for the game is under 10% completion percentage makes me fear that many started and stopped once they became too frustrated. In conclusion, AI The Somnium Files is a truly fantastic game. Visual novels normally aren't my thing, but I quickly found myself engrossed in the mystery. It has one of the best scripts I can remember in a game, and truly stellar voice acting. While this one is on Game Pass, if it sounds at all interesting to you, then I implore you to check it out. Shadows, Threat, Silhouette, Acet. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you like, comment and subscribe, it really helps that YouTube algorithm allow the channel to grow. And we'll see you here next time on Xbox Arrow.